So now we're going to use a tool called Durbuster to do a little bit of directory busting. And there are other tools out there that are similar or do the same thing. There are two built-in tools, in fact. There's Durbuster, and there's also a tool called Durb, and then there is a tool called GoBuster. And you have a lot of options. My option of choice is Durbuster, but I do recommend that you write these down and just explore them for yourself and see which one you like the best. So I'm gonna go ahead and run Durbuster and I'm gonna run it like this with the ampersand at the end. And it's going to load up this nice little interface. And what we're gonna do is we're going to say, hey, I want to run against this target URL. I'm gonna go ahead and just copy this right here and alt tab back into it and syntax is important it's going to want the port 80 at the end you see the port 80 here with the slash and we're going to say go ahead and go faster on these threads and then we're going to go ahead and pick a list so go ahead and go to browse and let's go ahead and go to your base folder here go into your user your usr folder your share, which is right here. And then if you start typing word lists, it'll bring up word lists right here. And then you see Durbuster has its own folder right here. So we're going to select Durbuster. And from here, we can pick a variety of different lists. I like to just use the small list. If I'm not finding anything at all, maybe I'll move up to the medium and out on the interweb is a large list as well. But let's just go ahead and start with small for proof of concept. And so now let's break it down. We've kind of talked about it in the last video, but let's just do a quick reminder. What we're doing is we're going out to web directories and we're using these word lists and these word lists have hundreds, if not thousands of different well-known directories. So it could be something like admin or like CGI bin, etc. And it's going to go out and try to navigate to these. It's also going to look for specific file extensions. So we know that we're up against an Apache website. Well, Apache runs PHP. If we were up against something like a Microsoft website, which is IIS, well, those tend to run something called ASP or ASPX. And so this is why enumeration is important as well, because we need to know what's running on the back end to find or make the most use out of it. Now, what we can do with these file extensions and what I like to do is I like to run it against PHP or whatever the base of the server is. But I also do like to run something like a text file, something like a zip file. And you can make this as, as long as or yeah, as many as you want. You could say RAR, uh, PDF, DOCX. But the more of these that you put in there, the more times it's going to search because it's going to search through the word list and say the word list has admin in it. It's going to try admin.pdf or admin.zip. So it's important to limit these to what you need. For our sake, I'm just going to go ahead and just use PHP. And we're going to just scan with the default results here and just kind of see what happens. So we'll go ahead and start that. And this will kick off and start scanning. And it's already finding right away. It's finding some stuff. You can see the list getting big. And you can go to this results view where you can see what it's found. And you can also go to this tree view here and see what it's found. And you can kind of click in. You can see it's found some potentially interesting files. We can go enumerate these as well. And it's found test.php page. You can right click on these and open in browser. And you can see that it's found this print test here in PHP 4. Uh, so we can look through some of these pages. We're going to go ahead and just let that go for now. It's going to take a minute. It could take uh, up to a while to scan, depending on how big your word list is, how many options you choose, and how well your website is cooperating with your scan as well. So from here, I'm going to show you a few more things. So let's go back to our preferences. If you still have that open, go ahead and go back. And let's go ahead and just go to the settings and we'll go to our manual configuration and let's boot up Burp Suite. 
And this is just another proof of concept that Burp Suite is your friend, especially when you're looking at websites. So we're going to utilize it just to take a peek. I just want to see what's out there. So we'll go ahead and just hit next and start Burp Suite here on this. And while we wait, another thing that I need to point out is if this were a website, like a real website instead of a test page, and a very important thing to do is view the source code. So we can right click in here and we could say view page source and we can view the source code. Now what we're looking for in source code are any kind of comments, potentially any kind of information disclosures. We might be looking for any sort of keys or password or user accounts or anything that might be disclosed in a source code that should not be disclosed. A lot of times when you do CTFs or you do hack the box or Volen hubs, they hide little comments in source code. But in a pen tester point of view, we're looking for more important things like the passwords or keys, etc. So we've got Burp Suite open and we're just going to go ahead and intercept one request here. And we're going to go ahead and just let this forward. Actually, we'll send this to repeater. I'm going to show you a little trick. Go ahead and send this to repeater. So you right click, send to repeater and you'll see your repeater tab opens up here. Now, the neat thing about repeater is that repeater will show you your response in real time and you can modify these. So you could say, hey, I want to send this here or you could say something about like, I want to send a post request maybe and let that run. And you could see, well, it says, OK, method not allowed. So it doesn't like that. But you can send different results, modify what you see here and see how that works for us. Now, this is not taking this exactly. So let's forward and see maybe if we're missing anything and we're not. So another thing that we can do is we can actually copy this. And what we can do is we go into the target here. And we've got the target showing. We could set the scope if we need to. So we can just we can go to scope here and we can just say add and then paste this in here for HTTP and we could do HTTPS for both. But let's just do HTTP and we'll just say yes. And what this does for us is this limits only searching for in scope items. So we're going to just limit now and then we're going to go ahead and look at the response that came back and you see there's no response here, but there is a 304 not modified. And the interesting thing is look at the server header. The server header is disclosing information to us as well. And we saw this in the Nikto scan. It's all coming back around, right? We saw the Nikto scan say Apache 1.3.20 and it pulled down the server header. This is why it's so useful. And this in itself, a screenshot of this right here is information disclosure as well. So this client that we're working on has a little bit of information disclosure problems. And we can just say, information disclosure here and we'll do something if I can type disclosure here and we'll say something like server headers disclose version information and we'll take a screenshot of that and we'll put that in our notes as well. So we're going to get really deep into Burp Suite once we get to the web app section. I just like to get you utilizing it and familiar with it and just so you're comfortable by the time we get there, we're going to use it a few more times when we talk through network items. And then once we get to the, the web app, it's going to be a lot of Burp Suite. So we'll get very comfortable with it very quick. So let's take a, another peek at our Dur Buster and see how that's working. And you could see that it still has 23 minutes, but I really just want to put you through the concept of it. The concept of it here is that we are looking for any sort of interesting directories and you can see response codes here as well. If you've never seen a response code, just know for now that 200s, 200s mean okay, 400s mean there's some sort of error, most typically like a 404 means page not found, and a 300 is typically a redirect and then there's 500 which are like server errors or other. So what we're going to come in here and do is just kind of peek at these and we can just kind of open these and see icons probably not that interesting doc has nothing in it right now the manual is not going to be that interesting to us neither is usage uh, maybe maybe usage is interesting let's open one of these in the browser and we can see what's kind of running and if you have your proxy on go ahead and turn your intercept off you see mine caught there 
Okay, and now this is an interesting page here. We can see usage statistics, and this might give us a little bit of information disclosure if we're able to access it. At least here, well, we can see a couple things. We see Webalizer version 2.01. So we can copy this and see if there's anything about this here on this machine that maybe is exploitable. So let's add this here as Webalizer version 201, and we'll just put it like on this usage.html. Now, we don't know for sure if this is running out on the web or if this is just an HTML page that has been generated by something else. So not for certain that it's actually running on this. It could just be something that they have in this usage folder. But it's always good to notate what kind of items they might be using. And they're utilizing this Webalizer for sure, at least in their network. Again, this is probably a little bit of information disclosure or information leakage here. So they've got a, a consistent problem with that. So let's go ahead and look more at the results and MRTG is in here and we can come through here and just look like what's MRTG and we can open that in the browser. <laughs> it says, what is MRTG? And it says multi-router traffic grapher. Okay. And we could scroll through this, read the details and we can keep going through here. And this could very well be a rabbit hole, but this kind of makes sense. And there's a web server here. There's a log file. Let's view the log file. Nothing, nothing unique there. Let's view the web server. Let's see if it's the same page. And it's a little bit different, um, but not not entirely different. So it's possible what we're seeing here is that what we talked about in the part one of this video, which is that we're seeing the test page is out there. And why was it out there? Right? Is it poor hygiene? It's still poor hygiene, even if they're running a web server, but they are running a web server here on the back end. Whether this web server is useful to us or not, really don't know. So the goal through this is to dig, and this is my challenge for you, is to dig kind of through these results that you get back. So wait until your, your scans finish here and dig through the results. Look at all of these. To me right now, it doesn't look that interesting, but again, we haven't fully enumerated. The real enumeration would be to go through each and every one of these and determine if there's anything of value here. Is there any sort of service information that could be useful, et cetera. So where we're at on the web ports at the moment, again, as a recap, we have our scan back, right? And we've seen 80s open and running Apache 1.3.20. We see 443's got the same. We also know about the mod SSL 2.8.4 and open SSL 0.9. 0.6b doesn't hurt to copy this and put this in our notes too because i think that's pretty useful we've got that here well, let's just go ahead and maybe put something up above just as a note and we ran our nikto scan and we saved this to our for our notes so when we go write a report we have it ready and we've got some information here that we've written down as well so it appears that there are some potential vulnerabilities here but we won't know until we start digging into google Okay, and that will be very, very important. But we're going to get to that when we start getting into the end of this little series here. And then we get in transition into the exploitation part of the series. We'll work on exploiting these. So this is just a few tricks on how you can enumerate websites. And when we're coming through and showing you these ports and we go over all these ports that we see, we're going to come across new ports when we do pen tests. And what, what it comes down to is just having a methodology. You might discover a new port. And as long as you have a, a methodology, that's all you need. So we're going to work on building that methodology. And you might find other tools for, for searching websites that you like. You might say, hey, I hate your methods or, you know, these tools just work better for me. And that's absolutely fine as long as you're developing your own methodology. So just start thinking about when you see a website, what are the basics that you're looking for? When you come across the website, you're looking for service version information, which we have here. You're looking for any sort of maybe backend directories. You're looking for source code. You're looking for potential vulnerability scanning with Nikto and any sort of information that you can divulge. Same thing, we can come back here. We talked about it before with Wappalizer. You can click on Wappalizer and see a lot of the same things that we saw. It knows the operating system. It knows the web server extensions and it knows what's running on the back end. So there's a lot of useful information here. And this is all we are after at this point. We just want to scan and enumerate 
and then we're going to dig deep and exploit. So that is it for this. We're going to move on to the next port in this section. We'll do a little bit more enumeration, see what else we can uncover. So I will catch you over in the next video.